After the show with Bill Goodman and our guest Jonathan Miller and Jeff Smith, we've just taped a program on uh, Jeff's new book uh, entitled Mr. Smith Goes to Prison. It uh, features the federal penitentiary in Manchester, Kentucky, and uh, that show will be coming up uh, in a few weeks on KET as soon as we get through with all these uh, political races that we're going to talk about next. So uh, because they are uh, recovering politicians, uh, I thought maybe they could weigh in on a couple of uh, political notes uh, from uh, across the uh, nation that we're always interested in talking to people about. So, uh, Jonathan, um, let me just uh, ask you first, as former state treasurer and, uh, and a, a member of Governor Bashir's staff, uh, a practicing attorney now, but uh, you've always got your thumb on the pulse of uh, politics, whether local, state, or national. This uh, presidential race is, um, is, is pretty wild right now. Give me your take on, uh, on the mood of the voters. We have a, a very angry electorate. It's, uh, it's, um, we've seen this develop over the last decade, maybe the last couple decades. Uh, but uh, during this uh, summer of Trump, which uh, I hopefully will have ended uh, on September 21st. With or the by the time summer, we tape this uh, right, program. <laughs> um, you know, the, right now as we tape the program, the the three top candidates that take over more than half of the votes are people who've never held office. In. And uh, I think that that's very telling. Uh, I think you see it in Kentucky as well. I think in a typical year, and I'm obviously biased, I think in a typical year, Jack Conway would be running away with this thing. But uh, he has been in politics for a while. Matt Bevin hasn't. And uh, uh, I think the exp inexperience, I think, would hurt Bevin in an ordinary year kind of appeals to that. I, I think Conway still wins, but uh, this mood uh, does favor the outsider. Jeff, what do you think about um, uh, that sort of theme that, that seems to be running through both uh, Republicans and Democrats? O on the Democratic side, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders has been uh, in Washington for a long time, but he's been uh, an independent and he's sort of been behind the scenes and he continues to surge. Yeah, I mean, you've got a guy like Martin O'Malley, who in any conventional presidential election cycle, people would be saying, hey, that guy looks like a president, he's got a great resume, 15 years of executive experience as mayor of Baltimore and then governor of, uh, of Maryland. Why isn't he the leading alternative to Hillary Clinton instead of this guy who was, isn't even a Democrat, you know, calls himself a, a, an independent Democrat and a socialist? So... Clearly, both parties, as, as Jonathan noted, are seeing this kind of angst, and we shouldn't be mystified it, by it. We've got a few cities in this country, New York, Washington, San Francisco, that have prospered immensely over the last you know, 15, 20 years. And then a giant swath of the heartland, much of which hasn't prospered at all, but is just struggling to keep up. And it's not surprising that a lot of people are disillusioned with what they view as an establishment politics that ignores their needs the establishment politics that's overwhelmingly pro-immigration reform, doesn't think about all the people whose jobs, you know, who, who feel that their jobs are being taken or threatened by immigration. People who are an establishment that's overwhelmingly pro-free trade without thinking about many of the workers, industrial workers in the heartland who've been displaced uh, by offshoring. So I understand the, the anger. Uh, Jonathan, uh, do you, we're taping this on a day um, that John uh, Boehner, uh, House Speaker, uh, has uh, uh, announced his retirement. Also, just uh, adjacent to that, uh, the Pope visiting uh, America. Um, do you see this as just a sort of blip on the, uh, the screen, depending on how the Kentucky race goes? Nationally, we just we don't know what's going to happen there just yet. Or do you think this is the sort of the rise of the possibility of a third party candidacy uh, or independents getting more active? Uh, is it going to last? I think we're going to see this kind of uh, dis, uh, discontentment, uh, anger. I think we're going to see it, it last be durable for for some time. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, unless the economy rebounds in a serious way. I mean, the economy certainly has rebounded on many different levels, but until, you know, folks really feel that uh, income levels are, are, are returning to where they were before, until folks believe that their, their kids are going to actually do better than them, other than being, uh, or their kids are going to be the, gener the first generation that does not advance past their parents. I, I think that that kind of thing happens. I think third parties, though, it's, uh, we, we always talk about third parties, and sometimes there are personalities large like Ross Perot that can can help uh, create a party at, at uh, in one election or another, but structurally it's very tough. Uh, since the founding, we've really seen you know two different parties dominate at the same time. So I, I think we're going to see the Democrats and the Republicans really polarized, but uh, I, I don't see a third party coming in anytime soon. 
All right. Thank you both for being here. Thanks so much, Phil. Thank you.